Hey, good morning, Anthem. Welcome to chapel. Hey, we've got two more weeks until spring break. It's an exciting time. So in those two weeks, make sure you work hard, stay focused, so that we can all kind of relax on that week off. And remember, tomorrow is St. Patrick's Day. So be sure to pull out your green clothes. We're going to all wear green tomorrow here at school. Uh, right now, we're going to get into worship, and then we'll keep talking about the Easter story. I'll see you in a minute. Father of kindness, you have poured out grace. Brought me out of darkness, you have filled me with peace. Giver of mercy, you're my help in time of need. Lord, I can't help but see. Faithful you are. Promises are yes and amen. All your promises are yes and amen. Beautiful Savior, you have brought me. Hold me from the ashes, you have broken every curse. Blessed Redeemer, you have set this captive free. Lord, I can't help but see. Promises are yes and amen. Faithful you are. Faithful forever you will be. Faithful you are. And all your promises are yes and amen. All your promises are yes and amen. And I will rest in your promises, my confidence. Is your faithfulness I will rest in your promises my confidence is your faithfulness I will rest in your promises my confidence is your faithfulness I will rest in your promises, my confidence, in your faithfulness, I will rest in your promises, my confidence, in your faithfulness, oh, I will
is our yes and amen. Oh, all your promises are yes and amen. All your promises are yes and amen. All your promises are yes and amen. All right, well, we have just three weeks until Easter Sunday. It's coming up quick. It's going to be at the end of our spring break. So you get that whole week off, and then we end it by celebrating Easter on April 4th, I think. April 4th. Uh, two weeks ago, we talked about just kind of what led up to the Easter story. Remember the uh, Israelites, God's people, they were looking for a savior and they thought that savior would come and deliver them from the empires that were ruling over them and kind of kept them down. Some of them took them into slavery, some of them kicked them out of their land. They thought the savior was going to come, set up his kingdom, uh, kind of like an empire and rule. Uh, but but we found that Jesus did not come to do that. Last week we talked about the part of the story where uh, Peter actually cut the dude's ear off when they came and tried to arrest Jesus. And because he was defending Jesus, he was his friend, he, they thought this Jesus is, is the savior, he's gonna bring the kingdom of God, so we're gonna defend him, right? But Jesus said, no, that's not the way of the kingdom of God. Instead, he, um, he showed service and sacrifice and a way of peace rather than a way of violence and dominance. And today I want to pick up in the story uh, where we left off. As Peter cuts that guy's ear off and Jesus ends up healing him and letting himself be arrested, they actually take Jesus and they put him on trial. Now, the, the Roman authorities, they couldn't find anything guilty about Jesus. They, they saw him and they, they saw what the, the Jewish religious leaders presented and they said, this guy's not guilty of anything. And the Romans, they were the, the dominant empire at the time. So if there was any threat to their empire, they would surely take care of it. If they thought any, anybody, no matter who it was, was a threat to the stability and the continued power of their empire, they would have taken him out, no questions asked. But they looked at Jesus and they said, this guy's not a threat. Um, instead, what we find is the religious leaders at the time, the Jewish religious leaders, they found Jesus to be a threat because the things he was teaching were really threatening their power, right? They, the religious leaders of the Jewish people, they had a lot of power over the Jewish people uh, because religion can have a lot of power over people. It shouldn't, but it did and it does. Um, and so they were threatened because Jesus came teaching this idea of service and sacrifice and a different way of living life, and it kind of interfered with what they were doing. Uh, this guy that they brought Jesus before, his name was Pilate. And Pilate was a Roman ruler uh, in that region where Jesus was. And they brought him to Pilate and they, they said, Jesus is doing this and this, he's trying to incite rebellion, you better take care of him. And Pilate doesn't find anything wrong with Jesus. In fact, in Luke 23, verses 13 through 16, uh, it says this, Pilate called together the chief priests, those were the people that were accusing Jesus of, of this, the rulers and the people, and said to them, 
You brought me this man as one who was inciting the people to rebellion. I have examined him in your presence and have found no basis for your charges against him. He has done nothing to deserve death. Therefore, I will punish him and then release him. So Pilate, he's saying, you brought me this guy. You say that he's trying to cause a rebellion that's going to threaten perhaps the Roman Empire or the stability of the government in that region. And he says, I don't find anything wrong with him. This guy is, is not guilty. In fact, he is innocent. And so he says, you know, just to appease you, I will punish him somehow, but then I'm going to let him go because he doesn't deserve death. Uh, well, the Jewish leaders, they kept pushing, they kept pushing, they kept pushing for Jesus to be taken out, to be killed. And finally, Pilate says, you know what, forget this. I'm washing my hands of this. Um, you guys have demanded that, that he be killed and they end up demanding that another criminal be released instead of Jesus and Jesus still be killed. And he says, fine, he's tired of it. Have what you want, we will sentence Jesus to death. And they do. And they sent him to be crucified. And that is, was a form of punishment, a very public form of punishment, that was really reserved for criminals. Uh, they were put onto a cross, and it was a very brutal, horrible uh, punishment. And so Jesus does die on that cross. They take him, and they beat him, and they put him on that cross. And um, in the end, Jesus dies there on the cross. An innocent man dies and gave his life, let himself be arrested, be taken, knowing what was coming. He dies on that cross. And I want to look back at everything that kind of led up to this point again, because it's important to know that in the history that led up to this time of the Jewish people, the Israelites, one of their religious traditions was to bring a sacrifice every year uh, so that it could be killed and it would symbolically kind of cover the sins of their people. Uh, they brought each year an innocent, spotless lamb. It was something that was, it had to be super pure, it had to be totally clean, and it was a lamb. And they would bring this every year and they'd sacrifice it to cover, to take care of the sins of the people for that year. And so we see so many parallels with Jesus in this because Jesus came as an innocent man, somebody not guilty of anything, and he sacrificed his own life. And in doing that, he took care of the sins of not just the Jewish people, but <laughs> what's cool is he, he came and he said, this is not just for the Jewish people, this is for all of humanity. It was God's way of you know, redeeming humanity to himself. These sacrifices, this was not, this was not gonna work. The, you know, people are messed up, we mess things up, we even mess up traditions, even that perhaps God had instructed them to do. So he said, I'm gonna send Jesus, my innocent son, somebody who will not be guilty, he is spotless, and he will be the final sacrifice. He will be the Lamb of God uh, that will cover the sins of all humanity. And so in Jesus dying, he covered all of our sins. He covered, when we come to him and we accept him into our lives and we have a relationship with him, no matter what we've done, no matter no matter what, our sins are covered because of the death, because of the sacrifice that Jesus made on that cross. And so that is good news for us. That is fantastic news for us because you and I, uh, your parents, your teacher, your neighbors, everybody you know, we are all human and we mess up constantly. But Jesus came to take care of that. 
And so we're going to end the story there for today. Um, but next week we're going to finish the story because it's not over yet. There's still a surprise ending. Um, but just reflect on that this week, that Jesus came as an innocent person, God in human flesh, to be sacrificed for us, to, to wash away all of our mistakes and everything we do that, that messes up our own lives and the world around us. Uh, we have forgiveness for that, and that is good news. All right, have a great week, and we will finish the Easter story next week. See you soon.